So I recently finished Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep of Fragment Passes, which is part of the Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue Collection. I swear these titles are just getting fucking longer. This is a brand new content which also marks the first ever Kingdom Hearts game to be made with the Unreal Engine which Kingdom Hearts 3 is also set to be made in. And since every Kingdom Hearts fan is making a video about this, I thought I'd share my pointless opinion to the 9 people who actually watch my videos. Now before we jump into Aqua's Downward Spiral, I thought I'd emphasize a few things. 1. This is not a good game to start off with if you want to get into Kingdom Hearts. Let me explain this in wrestling terms. If Kingdom Hearts 3 was Wrestlemania, then 2.8 is the Elimination Chamber, the Royal Rumble is 2.5, and 1.5 is whatever pay-per-view WWE decide to have in December. So if you really want to get into Kingdom Hearts, play 1.5 and 2.5 first, both which are on the PS3 and sent to be released in the PS4. Otherwise this will be just as confusing as Randy Orton winning the Royal Rumble in 2017. And number two, this will be spoiler free. Mainly because the game wouldn't allow me to record the ending on my PS4 because Swear Enix are sensitive with spoilers, but considering I've been putting most of my focus looking at the new engine, story wasn't really my main priority going into the game. Now the biggest question I had with Kingdom Hearts being put in the new engine would have been if it would still feel like a Kingdom Hearts game. Well the good news is that 0.2 still feels mostly like a main Kingdom Hearts game, just having a few new things and a polish to its face. Maybe it's just me, but I got a sense that the game is actually quite quicker. It feels like I was chugging along a much more quicker pace than I would have in the games before. Move it feels a lot more parkour and one franchise I found myself comparing this to was Assassin's Creed. And even the combat, while still very much like a Kingdom Hearts style, felt bigger allowing me to get a greater heights and smack those annoying flying heartless as well as special abilities for bigger and grander attacks that just fill up the screen. There's even puzzle elements to the game that, whilst not difficult, do actually have you thinking about the area and the mechanics in order for you to progress. And yet most of the game still focused on exploration and combat and I only really saw these puzzles in one area. Another new feature is that you get certain challenges and completely then reward you with items to put on your character. And yes, whilst it's a really fun little extra I'm pretty sure a lot of people will get into, it's one I honestly don't see myself really playing around with in Kingdom Hearts 3. It's also distracting that they don't appear doing cutscenes and sometimes just pop in once you get back into the gameplay. Now as I stated, this game actually has some polish with its graphics and, well, the areas are... how can I actually put it? Glorious. I mean, I know a lot of the game is dark and eerie, but I spent a lot of time just looking at some of the details and some of the areas that this game actually has. My favourite area being based around Cinderella, which actually has a more open world to it, allowing me to explore over rooftops and find the areas above and even below the main ground. And everything from all the areas, the background, and even the cutscenes are just packed with the littlest of details. I mean, just look at this. It's not really needed, but look, this is Mario levels of unnecessary detail. I know some people are put off by some of the Disney characters like Mickey, but I don't really mind it as such. Because it does lose a little of its cartoony esque sound the original engine bought. But for a new gaming system with more power, the franchise would have eventually adapted anyway. I still believe it looks very much like a Kingdom Hearts game. Alright, now I've had quite a lot of good stuff to say about this, but I also have a quite a few issues with it. First of all, whilst I did say the story isn't my main priority, it's still rather weak. Yes, I loved Aqua in the original Birth by Sleep, and seeing the internal struggles she's having whilst in the Realm of Darkness is slightly interesting, but some of the dialogue came off as rather silly. I haven't felt my heart stir in a long time. It looks like worse things are stirring. And yes, I'm not expecting Hitchcock's levels of storytelling, and yeah, the games aren't as deep as some people would say, but there were some moments that kind of felt like it was padding out, and other times it just kind of was boring. It also tried to do that Kingdom Hearts thing where it tried to tie itself within the first game, which, whilst it does a decent job, is very much unneeded. If you really want to know more about this supposed spoiler, then I suggest checking out Super Butter Bun's video because she pretty much goes into more detail about the whole game. In fact, her video was probably better than this one. I don't know why you're watching. It tries to be its own thing, but it desperately tries to tie itself in with everything else, when just being Kingdom Hearts related is enough at this point. Moving back to the gameplay, there isn't really much variety of the Heartless enemies. Yes, we do get the traditional and newer Heartless, but those are just a handful. Do you really want to know how many bosses are in this game? Three. And you have to fight them all repeatedly. Yes, the battles do chase for more challenge and some are always cool, but there's not much variety. And well, there is a pretty good reason for that. This is a pretty short game. You can actually get it finished in around two hours. Now that's not to say that short games are bad, but for something as big as Kingdom Hearts, it doesn't really satisfy it as a game. And honestly, that's because it isn't. 
it's really just a demo for Kingdom Hearts 3. And again, that's not saying that demos are bad. Some of the demos I played got me really interested in some games I wouldn't even consider playing before. But I paid £40 for this, and even with an original movie and Dream Dot Distance, it still feels like a bit too much. So in the end, it doesn't really satisfy itself as its own game, but as a demo, it's bloody good. And it goes to show how the new engine works with something we're all so familiar with. And even with the some issues I had with repeating Heartless and just sort of getting a bit boring, I did still enjoy the gameplay and I thought the graphics are absolutely stunning. Now, this hasn't swept all my worries about Kingdom Hearts 3 under the rug, but as something to give us an idea of what it could be, I think I'm okay with dealing with Aqua's evil face 